This is Glasgow, Scotland's biggest city by population and a place that's used to facing big challenges. Now it's set itself an ambitious new target. Glasgow's aim is to become net zero by 2030, meaning it'll have to cut right back on its carbon emissions and offset any that remain. In a city full of old buildings that aren't exactly known for their energy efficiency, that's not going to be easy. And yet one new project is showing what can be done, using technology from IES to turn one of Glasgow's most historic sites into a hub for clean renewable energy that operates off-grid. That site is Pollock Country Park, the largest green space in the city and home to a number of iconic and important buildings. There's Pollock House, the ancestral home of the Maxwell family, and the Burrell Collection, a world-class art gallery. Next to it is the Noe Head Lodge, constructed in the early 1900s, and down by the river is an old courtyard and sawmill which is being rebuilt as a new heritage centre. Completing the lineup is a centre for training police dogs. They might all be close together, but these buildings are all very different, and using the same methods to upgrade them simply won't work, as the IES team discovered. Pollock House and the courtyard are Grade A listed buildings, which means you're quite limited in terms of the different types of retrofit that you can install in these buildings, and it's not just the exterior that's listed, it's also the interior. But that doesn't mean better heating and lighting systems can't be considered, like the high efficiency condensing boilers and low energy LEDs that have recently been fitted at Pollock House. But the more modern barrel collection doesn't have to adhere to such strict rules. The centre was recently given a £68 million refurbishment, which saw it reduce its heating demands and install photovoltaic panels. It's also equipped with systems for ventilation and dehumidification, which can use a lot of energy. But they're vital to the running of the museum. In fact, over two-thirds of the park's energy use comes from just this one building. To help the local council decide how to update these structures so they're compliant with net zero, IES has assembled a digital twin of the whole site. A digital twin is a virtual replica of a physical asset, which can be anything from a single object to a group of buildings like at Bollock Park, or even a whole city. In this case, physics-based digital models of each structure have been created, populated with live data of their energy use and carbon output. IES Virtual Environment, the company's flagship software for simulating building performance, was used to make digital twins of Pollock House, the Burrell Collection and of the Courtyard. Our core software is called the uh, ISV, the Virtual Environment, which is in the market since 28 years now and it has been used so far uh, to design uh, efficient buildings worldwide. For Noe Head Lodge and the Police Dog Training Centre, IES's master planning tool ICD was chosen. We have the ICD Intelligent Community Design, which is our master planning tool, which allows us to create models of like uh, uh, master plans, group of buildings, communities, cities, and it has been used in the park to create the, the model of the park. We already had a lot of really good data that we were able to sort of plug into the geometry of the model and then have a very accurate, almost completely calibrated model of the borough collection ready to go. Once the baseline of the estate's energy consumption had been calculated, IES plotted a number of scenarios highlighting how and where improvements can be made across the park. Each scenario showed a different level of upgrade and what the effects would be giving users several options to work with. Five different scenarios were modelled just for the courtyard, from simply installing electric heating systems to having double glazing, insulation, heat pumps and a hydroelectric turbine powered by the river. Overall, the results showed that if all the possible changes were made across the estate, it would lead to a 34% reduction in carbon emissions. Another tool that was really key in this project was the Intelligent Virtual Network, the IVN. This is a tool which allows us to create digital twins of an energy network. So basically it uh, allows us to analyse the supply and demand between different buildings. So this was really key in the park to understand how renewables could be deployed and how the different buildings could exchange resources. Complete decarbonisation of the building's heating demands could also be achieved by interconnecting all of their electrical and heating systems. 
On top of this, 4 megawatt hours of battery storage and 3,000 square metres of solar panels will be needed to achieve the goal. The data we'll get from the digital twin will allow us to become better operators when it comes to managing energy. It's not just about designing something, it's about operating and optimising the energy you've got. What's really interesting for me is the role of small-scale renewables as part of that mix. The final phase was the creation of live dashboards for displaying the data and results using IES's online data analysis platform, iScan. It allows information on the building's energy use and carbon output to be viewed at a glance or in detail depending on who's viewing it. Vast amounts of data can be easily processed and understood, and that's crucial to making a project like this work. Transforming a site like Pollock Park to net zero is a big challenge, and it's one that cities around the world are now having to face. But with digital twin technology to hand, it's a task that can be made a lot more manageable.